Welcome to the Fix Sleep Bedtime Stories channel, your sanctuary for relaxation, meditation, and a peaceful sleep. Immerse yourself in the soothing embrace of sleep-inducing tales, carefully crafted to transport you to mysterious lands. Let the gentle rain and serene sounds of nature accompany you on this journey to relaxation. Say goodbye to restless nights and welcome the embrace of a restful sleep with our magical sleep stories. So, let the tale begin. Magical Druid Rituals Chapter 1 The Sacred Gathering in the depths of the sacred forests of Celtia, where towering ancient trees stood as silent sentinels, the druids gathered at each solstice to perform their sacred rituals. These forests were a place of profound mystery and reverence, where the air was thick with the scent of pine and the whispers of ancient spirits. The forest floor was carpeted with moss and fallen leaves, creating a soft, natural tapestry underfoot. The light of the setting sun filtered through the dense canopy, casting dappled shadows that danced with the movements of the druids. Clad in robes of green and brown, the druids moved with a grace that spoke of their deep connection to the earth. Their garments, woven from natural fibers, blended seamlessly with their surroundings, allowing them to become one with the forest. The robes were adorned with symbols of their respective roles within the circle, leaves, feathers, and stones, each carrying its own sacred meaning. The druids' faces were serene, their eyes closed in silent prayer as they made their way to the clearing where their revered leader, Cathpad, awaited them. Cathpad, the wise elder, stood at the center of the clearing. His presence commanded respect and inspired devotion among his followers. With a long silver beard that reached his chest and eyes, that glimmered with centuries of knowledge, Cathbad was a figure of both wisdom and strength. His eyes, though aged, held a vibrant spark, reflecting the depth of his connection to the spiritual world. He held a staff, intricately carved with symbols of power and protection, its base planted firmly in the earth, as if drawing strength directly from the land itself. As the solstice moon rose high in the sky, casting its silvery light over the forest, the druids formed a circle around Cathbad. The moon, full and radiant, seemed to lend its own power to the gathering, illuminating the clearing with a soft, ethereal glow. This light mingled with the warm hues of the torches that the druids had placed around the perimeter, creating an atmosphere that was both mystical and serene. Cathbad raised his arms, his movements slow and deliberate, as he began to chant in the ancient tongue of the druids, his voice deep and resonant echoed through the forest, calling upon the spirits of nature to bless their gathering and protect their tribe. The chant was a melody of words and tones that carried with it the weight of countless generations, each syllable imbued with the power of those who had come before. The other druids joined in, their voices rising in harmony creating a symphony that resonated with the very soul of the forest. 
the response from the forest was almost immediate. The trees seemed to hum with energy, their leaves rustling in a breeze that carried the whispers of the spirits. The air grew warmer, and a gentle light began to emanate from the ground, as if the earth itself was coming alive in response to the druid's call. This ethereal glow spread through the clearing, bathing the druids in a light that was both comforting and invigorating. In that moment, the druids felt the presence of their ancestors, a powerful and reassuring force that surrounded them, the spirits of those who had walked the earth before them, who had lived and died by the sacred tenets of their faith, were with them now. This connection to the past gave the druids strength and reaffirmed their purpose. They were the guardians of their people, the keepers of ancient knowledge, and the protectors of the sacred balance between man and nature. As the ritual continued, the druids remained in their circle, united in their devotion and purpose. They knew that the power of their magic, drawn from the very heart of the natural world, would protect their tribe from whatever challenges lay ahead. And as the night wore on, and the solstice moon reached its zenith, the druids felt a profound sense of peace, knowing that they were not alone, but part of a timeless cycle that stretched back to the dawn of time and would continue long into the future. Chapter 2 The Winter Vision One cold winter night, as the frost crept over the landscape and the wind howled through the ancient trees, the druids gathered around a roaring fire at the heart of their sacred circle. The forest, normally so vibrant and full of life, was now a silent, icy domain its inhabitants huddled in slumber against the chill. The moon hung low and pale in the sky, its light filtering through the bare branches, casting long shadows on the snow-covered ground. The fire crackled and sparked, sending up plumes of smoke that twisted and danced in the frigid air. The druids, wrapped in thick cloaks, drew closer to the warmth, their breath visible in the cold. Cathbad, their revered leader, sat directly opposite the fire, his face illuminated by the dancing flames. His long silver beard and hair seemed to glow in the firelight, and his eyes, deep and wise, reflected the flickering light. As the druids settled into a deep, meditative silence, the only sounds were the crackling of the fire and the occasional rustle of the wind. Cathbad closed his eyes, allowing himself to be enveloped by the tranquility of the moment. He focused on the warmth of the fire and the rhythmic sounds of the forest, seeking guidance from the spirits. Suddenly, the flames before him began to change. The crackling intensified, and the fire leapt higher, its color shifting from a warm orange to a deep, ominous red. Cathbad's eyes flew open, drawn to the mesmerizing display. In the heart of the fire, he saw a vision forming, a vision that chilled him more than the biting winter wind ever could. The flickering flames transformed into a vivid scene. Cathbad saw the gleaming armor of Roman legions, their polished helmets and shields reflecting the fiery light. The soldiers marched relentlessly, their expressions grim and determined. The rhythmic sound of their boots hitting the ground seemed to echo 
through the forest, a harbinger of doom. As the vision continued, Cathbad saw the sacred lands of Keltia laid out before the advancing army. The once peaceful and thriving villages were now engulfed in chaos and destruction. Flames consumed the wooden structures, and the cries of his people filled the air. The invaders showed no mercy, their swords and spears cutting down anyone who stood in their path. The very essence of their culture, the sacred groves and ancient stones, were being desecrated and destroyed. Cathbad's heart pounded in his chest as he witnessed the despair and desolation. The vision was so vivid, so real, that he could almost feel the heat of the burning villages and hear the cries of his people. His breathing quickened, and his hands gripped the arms of his chair as if trying to anchor himself to the present. With a sudden, jarring movement, Cathbad awoke from his trance. The vision dissipated, and the flames returned to their normal, comforting glow. The other druids, sensing his distress, looked up with concern. Cathbad's face was pale, his eyes wide with fear and determination. He knew that the spirits had shown him this vision for a reason. It was a warning, a glimpse into a possible future that they had to prevent at all costs. Cathbad took a deep breath, steadying himself. He could still feel the remnants of the vision's horror clinging to him, but he also felt a surge of resolve. The spirits had entrusted him with this knowledge, and it was his duty to act. They needed to prepare, to strengthen their defenses, and to use their magic to alter the course of events. Chapter 3 The Ritual of Protection Cathbad gathered the druids and shared his vision, the gravity of his words sinking deep into the hearts of his followers. Their faces grew solemn as they listened, the weight of the impending threat pressing heavily upon them. The vivid description of the Roman legions, the destruction of their sacred lands, and the cries of their people painted a dire picture. It was clear that only through their powerful magic and ancient rituals could they hope to alter the course of fate. The druids knew they had to act swiftly and decisively. Under the light of the full moon, which bathed the forest in a silvery glow, they began to prepare for the ritual of protection. This was not just any ritual. It was one that required immense concentration, unity, and the full extent of their magical prowess. Each druid had a role to play, and every element of the ritual had to be perfect. They began by creating a sacred circle in a clearing within the forest. This was not an ordinary circle. It was crafted with stones imbued with the essence of the earth, each stone carefully selected for its unique properties and connection to the land. These stones were placed at precise intervals, forming a powerful boundary that would contain and amplify their magic. The druids moved with purpose and reverence, their actions guided by ancient knowledge passed down through generations. Torches were lit to honor the fire element, their flames flickering and dancing in the cool night air. The torches represented not only fire, but also the spirit and energy that the druids sought to invoke. Their light added to the mystical ambience, cast 
casting long shadows that seemed to move with a life of their own. The scent of burning pine filled the air, mingling with the natural aromas of the forest. Cathbad, standing at the center of the circle, began to chant. His voice was deep and resonant, each word carrying the weight of ages. The chant was an invocation, calling upon the spirits of air and water to lend their strength to the druid's cause. His voice echoed through the forest, reaching the highest branches and the deepest roots. The chant was both a plea and a command, a demonstration of the druid's connection to the natural world. The other druids joined in, their voices harmonizing with Cathbad's to create a powerful symphony of sound. Together, their voices wove a spell that surged through the forest, an intricate tapestry of magic that reached out to the spirits of their ancestors and the natural world. The air around them seemed to hum with energy, a palpable force that grew stronger with each passing moment. The spirits responded to the druid's call. The air around the circle began to shimmer, and a gentle breeze stirred, carrying whispers of encouragement and support. The surface of a nearby stream began to ripple, reflecting the moonlight in a mesmerizing dance of light and shadow. The forest itself seemed to come alive. Every tree, rock, and creature contributing its energy to the ritual. As the chanting continued, the druids focused their minds on their intent to protect their land and people from the impending threat. They visualized a barrier, an impenetrable shield that would surround their territory turning away any who sought to bring harm. Their combined willpower and the strength of their magic flowed into this vision, giving it substance and form. The energy within the circle reached a crescendo, a brilliant burst of light emanating from the center where Cathbad stood. The light spread outward, encompassing the druids, and then expanding beyond the circle. It moved through the forest, touching every tree, stone, and creature with its protective power. The barrier was forming, a tangible manifestation of their combined efforts. Chapter 4 Turning the Tide As the ritual reached its peak, the druids could feel the immense power they had summoned coursing through the forest. The air crackled with energy, and the ground seemed to hum with an otherworldly vibration. At the center of this maelstrom stood Cathbad, his face serene but resolute. He knew what needed to be done to ensure the success of their spell. With a deep breath, he prepared to make the ultimate sacrifice. Cathbad began to chant in a language known only to the druids, an ancient tongue that held the keys to their deepest magic. As he chanted, he extended his arms, palms facing upwards, and closed his eyes. The other druids, sensing the gravity of the moment, fell silent their eyes fixed on their leader. The flames of the torches surrounding the circle flared up, casting long, flickering shadows. With each word of the chant, Cathbad's life force began to flow into the spell. The forest responded to this sacrifice with a brilliant display of light, illuminating the night with a radiant glow. The trees, Stones, and even the ground, seemed to pulse with energy, as if the entire forest was alive 
and answering the call of the druids. The light grew brighter and brighter until it was almost blinding. The spirits answered their call. A great wind swept through the forest, rustling the leaves and carrying the whispers of ancient voices. The spirits of the land, awakened by the druid's magic and Cathbad's sacrifice, lent their power to the protective barrier. The energy of the druid's magic spread across the land, creating an invisible shield that shimmered with ethereal light. When the Roman legions finally arrived at the borders of Celtia, they were met with a force they could not comprehend. As they marched forward, confident in their numbers and strength, they encountered seemingly supernatural events that halted their advance. Storms materialized out of clear skies, fierce winds and torrential rains lashing at the invaders. The ground beneath their feet shifted and moved, causing landslides that blocked their paths and swallowed their equipment. The Romans, trained and disciplined though they were, could not overcome these unnatural obstacles. Their attempts to advance were met with unyielding resistance, not only from the elements, but from the Celtic warriors, who seemed empowered by the very land they defended. These warriors, emboldened by the druid's magic, fought with a fervor and strength that the Romans had never before encountered. The Romans' swords and spears were no match for the power that protected Celtia. Their lines broke and their formations crumbled as they faced not just the fierce resistance of the Celtic warriors, but also the relentless fury of nature itself. Lightning struck their encampments, trees fell to block their paths, and rivers swelled to sweep away their bridges. The invasion was halted, and the Romans, bewildered and demoralized, were forced to retreat. They left behind their dead and their wounded, the land of Celtia, untouched by their conquest. The protective barrier, strengthened by Cathbad's sacrifice, held firm, its magic impenetrable to those who sought to bring harm. In the aftermath, the druids gathered once more at the sacred circle. The loss of Cathbad weighed heavily on their hearts, but they knew his sacrifice had saved their people. They honored him with a solemn ceremony, invoking the spirits to guide his soul to the afterlife. The forest, now peaceful and serene, stood as a testament to the enduring spirit of the druids and their ancient magic. The land of Celtia remained free, its people protected by the barrier that Cathpad and the druids had created. The invaders had been repelled, and the sacred balance between man and nature was preserved. The druids continued their rituals, maintaining the protective magic, and ensuring that the legacy of their leader lived on. The forest, once again filled with the sounds of life and the whispers of spirits, stood as a sanctuary for those who believed in the old ways. The story of Cathbad's sacrifice became legend, a tale of courage and magic passed down through generations. And as long as the druids walked the land, the spirit of Cathbad and the power of their ancient magic would continue to protect the sacred lands of Celtia. <laughs>